So we're back on the Razer 570 today. Today we're going to be doing uh, a shock swap or a strut, shock, uh, strut slash spring swap. Um, many people on the forums, me included, are pretty disappointed in, in how uh, the 570, the stock setup, uh, rides, um, especially going over uh, rocks and stuff. It's a super, super stiff ride. This suspension does not travel a whole lot to begin with, only I think nine inches. Um, and then the the struts that they put on it um, are not very adjustable. The only thing you can adjust on these uh, stock struts are the uh, preload, which is that little collar right there. So um, you can buy aftermarket Fox shocks, um, or uh, there's some other companies that make them walk in, I think. Um, but usually they're, you know, over a thousand bucks for a full setup, uh, really expensive, not something that I really want to pay for, not on this 570. So, um, a popular mod that a lot of people have mentioned online is the LTR 450 strut setup. So this is a strut from a Suzuki LTR 450, the front ones, um, as far as I know, any year will work and next to it is the uh, old stock shock. So look at them side by side. They're almost identical in length. There may be an inch difference. Um, so keep that in mind when you're putting this on a 570. I can't speak for the 900s or the 800s um, if this is a little bit shorter, but uh, I do know that the hole size for your mount is the same size as this. Um, and then the only ever di other difference really is uh, the width on this. And so we're going to be using spacers to fill up that gap. Nice thing about the LTR 450 is it's adjustable. Um, you have a better spring on it. Um, you can adjust the preload right there with the tool. You can adjust um, how, let's see, I don't know the proper term for it, but, but basically how easily it'll compress um, with this knob right there. And then you can also adjust how easily it um, extends. And that is that right there. And that's really important to be able to adjust those because when you're going over, say, someone like me who mostly rides on trails with big rocks, um, I'm going to set that to be very low. And so this will compress very easily and allow that, that suspension to travel very smooth. But if you're someone that maybe goes really fast and races, you want these a little bit stiffer so that going around corners uh, quickly you're going to stay level um, a little bit easier. So this is a really easy mod. Um, just buy these on eBay. Um, they're usually around 200 bucks. I got really lucky. I found these for 150 just um, from a local uh, person selling them off their 450. And these are almost brand new. Um, just a couple scuffs. The guy only used them for two months he said. So um, I have already installed the passenger side. Passenger side was super simple. It's literally you pull the old one out, put the new one in. The driver side is one that's going to be a little bit more difficult because we have our master cylinder right here. So a lot of people on the forum said that they had to flip the shock around in order to clear this. So we're going to uh, test that today. Um, there's really no disadvantage of flipping it the other direction except that you lose your knobs right here. They're a little bit harder to to gain uh, access to but you can still do it and it's not a big deal. So um, step one we want to make sure the razor is in park. We're going to chalk the back uh, tires and we're going to lift up um, the front end of it specifically uh, the front left tire and we're going to pull that wheel off. Break the lug nuts while it's still on the ground. It's a 15 16 inch socket. Um, got the back wheels secured. It's in park. And go ahead and start lifting it up. And for safety reasons, we're going to throw a um, jack stand underneath that frame as well. Set your lug nuts aside, don't lose them. Pull the tire off. Okay, 
cell, it's really simple to get these off. Um, bolt here, bolt at the top. Air tools make these go super fast. Uh, these are 15 millimeter bolts. Yours won't look like this. Um, previous owner had a lift kit on mine. I took it off and uh, I think he used aftermarket um, bolts. Um, but that one on top I believe is stock so it should be 15 millimeter, 15 millimeter for you. Okay, now we have to um, get this bolt out and this is going to want to drop once you remove this bolt. So make sure you're supporting it just like that, perfect. Okay, now the top one's next. Um, easiest thing is just get your wrench, hold this side and a ratchet, ratchet this side so uh, there's nothing in the way on this side. Okay, and then um, just removing this bolt, that whole strut will then fall down. All right, set that over here. Going to take our new shock, LTR450 shock, and uh, we have these um, electrical tape um, covering the bushings just to keep them in good shape, hold them in. So now we'll just do a fit test. Yeah, and it looks like that is contacting the top of that master cylinder, which is no problem. We'll just flip that around, move it up underneath there. Okay, looks like there's some of these wires kind of getting contact, um, but. We'll just move those out of the way and pick up. Uh, when we left off, I did a dry fit of the shock on the driver's side. And if I put the oil reservoir to the rear, it was hitting the master cylinder. If I put it to the front, it was rubbing the coolant reservoir or the coolant recovery tank. So reading on forums um, with people who had done this mod on the 900, I didn't hear anyone mention um, the problem with the reservoir tank on this side, okay, um, but uh, I figured I would mess around, um, see what I could do to get it to fit. So, um, sorry I didn't record actually putting this on. Uh, I was trying to find a solution for a couple days uh, before I found one and I didn't have the camera on me, but what I ended up doing, I actually had to move my coolant tank. If you remember from the previous uh, shot I had, the coolant tank, the bottom of it was hitting the top of this. So the recovery tank um, was actually really easy to move. So what I elected to do, there are two bolts, these kind of gold colored ones right there and right there. They are Torx 25. I loosen those and that's what hold on our tank Okay, and to gain access to those, or to make it a little bit easier, I took these two bolts off. That allowed the uh, radiator to pivot forward and gained access, or gave me some clearance to get to those two bolts. Okay, so all I did was remove these two bolts. Okay, then I was trying to decide where I should mount the coolant tank, and I ended up doing it right inside underneath the hood. The reason why I chose this, there was a couple places underneath I was considering. Um, one, I don't have a winch on this right now, and I want to put one in the future. And a lot of the places I found were going to conflict with um, a winch. And then two, the other places I was looking at, it was going to be either too close to the ground, or um, I didn't feel like it was well enough protected. So um, it was simple enough just to move it in here. There was already a hole 
in the bottom of this pocket to allow water and stuff. So I just fished um, my coolant line through there. I was not able to use the existing uh, coolant line because it just wasn't long enough. It was about four or five inches too short. So all I did was take um, new coolant line, um, bring it off here, go down and under, up through that hole, and into this coolant tank. Um, I chose to mount this just with um, Velcro, really sticky Velcro. I don't believe it's going to go anywhere. Um, the Really the only disadvantage I can think of doing this is if for some reason my razor overheats and this overflows, then I'm going to get coolant inside here, which will drain since there's a little hole at the bottom. But um, if you're someone that likes to keep your user manual in here or maybe some tools, it's probably not the best option, um, potentially. Okay. Now, as long as everything's working correctly, you should never have an issue with this boiling over. Um, for me, I keep all my tools and stuff in a plastic baggie, um, and I actually keep them in the back of my razor because I have a little pack back there. Um, but this, is, this was my solution to get those shocks to fit. Um, like I said, it was a really, really easy mod. I wasn't originally planning on doing it. I didn't think it was going to be an issue, but when I put the shocks on, and after I read online, people on forums mentioned they had that issue with the 570. I don't know if they also have that issue with the 900 or even the 800s. Um, so if if you can comment and let me know and let, or let other people know if they've had that issue in the past, that'd be great information for them. Okay. Otherwise, um, we had to use some spacers on these shocks because we knew this was going to be a little bit smaller than the stock razor. Okay. We used eight spacers, and all I, all I used was washers. So I used eight washers on the bottom, and on this one, I used four. Technically, I used five, um, but you should use four. The reason why I used five is when I got the shock, um, I realized half of my um, bushing cover was uh, missing. So normally, that shouldn't be missing. So typically, you're only going to use four washers on this side. Okay, So you just get those bolted up like that. Um, you want to make sure your uh, settings, like your rebound and your uh, depression settings are set correctly on both sides. And then this is how you adjust your preload. Okay, um, These two, this is a lock collar or a lock ring. You're going to uh, loosen that. Then you're going to take your tool and um, either tighten down or loosen this bottom one, up or down. Then you're going to set this in and lock it. Okay. And you guys should have a tool um, in your kit that lets you um, tighten or loosen those. Okay. So really, that's um, all there is to this mod. You'll probably have to do an alignment when you're done because it does change the angle very slightly. Um, these are, I notice, about an inch longer than the stock suspension, and uh, that will change your toe. Um, so make sure you get an alignment done. Um, in the future, I may do an alignment video on an easy do-it-yourself alignment for razors. But um, for now, just uh, either take it to a shop or have a friend do it. Okay, go ahead and put your wheel back on. Um, retorque your lug nuts. Lug nuts, of course, you always want to do in the star pattern. And uh, torque settings uh, on this is 27 foot-pounds. Okay, and you're done torquing that. Last thing we want to do is check CV bind. Okay, to check CV bind, we're just going to lift the razor up enough to get the front wheels off the ground. Once we have the front end lifted up so we can spin this wheel freely, uh, what we want to do is we want to spin it freely and we want to make sure that there's no clunky noises inside our CV joint which are right here and right there, okay? What happens is if we put those CV joints at too much of an aggressive angle, the joints will no longer want to um, glide because they're at too much of an angle, and over time you can destroy those CV joints fairly easy. So as I spin this, 
the only thing I hear is my brake uh, dragging against that rotor. Okay, I'm not hearing any clunking or anything, which is a good sign. What we also want to do, I want to take our wheel, move it to the extreme max, to like the left side, and then also spin it. Okay. We hear nothing but brake pedal or brake pad again. And we're going to take it to the other side. Okay. Same thing. Yeah, I hit some rubbing. Oh, okay. What? Okay, that was just my tire rubbing against my control arm. <laughs> okay. So essentially we've put this CV joint in the worst case um, scenarios possible. The only time this suspension should really be um, in this position is if you were going off of a jump or something or you're uh, doing some whoops. Um, and so essentially the suspension shouldn't ever be in this position, right? So, but we do test it at the extreme um, angles just to make sure that there's not going to be any binding. So, um, after that, we know it's going to be good. Lift it down, take it for a test spin.